Tommy Banner, the laugh-a-minute frontman with the West Country's most famous musical export, the Wurzels. But it was hard to keep up the public smiles when Tommy was told he had prostate cancer. I was just in complete shock. In fact, I didn't believe it, complete disbelief, because I looked and I said, what, me? No. I've never been ill, I've never had anything wrong with me. And he said, well, he said, yeah, you've, I'm afraid you've got cancer. I can tell you that the um, mole that we took a biopsy from on your face has turned out to be a melanoma, which is a type of skin cancer. Okay. Of course, it's the same for everyone at the beginning. A cancer diagnosis hits like a hammer, and then the questions begin. First question was, can it be treated? And how long will it take? Uh, and can we get rid of it? Really, as a young person, I was worried about my hair falling out because it sounds shallow, but, you know, it's a very visual thing and it's almost like a badge of, yes, I've got cancer, I've lost my hair. The big question was, what the hell's going to happen now? Uh, I wanted to know what was going to be, um, what was actually going to be the treatment what was going to be the regime and how much would it would affect my, my life. Understandable questions, understandable fears. The reality is no two cancer treatments are the same. Every patient is an individual. Every treatment is individual. What form of treatment we use varies, so does the length of time it takes. But what's beyond doubt is that positive outcomes are increasing every day. There is no such thing as a typical cancer patient, so even the a same cancer can be very different in, in different individuals depending on the stage at which it's diagnosed. And similarly, the treatments are very different, and so you may have a um, surgery, you may have radiotherapy, you may have chemotherapy, or you may have a combination of all three. We're proud of our new cancer centre in Taunton. Equally, we know it's not somewhere people want to visit. We know patients have fears, anxieties, they have questions. So in this short film, we'd like to try to answer some of those questions and give you an understanding of what to expect. OK, let's start at the beginning. Here's something you don't normally get to see, a quick peek behind the scenes. These are our laboratories at Musgrove Park Hospital where we look at your condition in detail and start planning what type of treatment you'll need. You may need to have a number of tests before starting treatment so doctors can decide the best plan for you. That might be blood tests or a scan. The information that gives us will be discussed in depth by the medical team responsible for your care, who will then decide what treatment you should be offered. These are complicated processes that can't be rushed. That's why sometimes it can seem like a while before a patient hears what's going to happen next. Believe me, it's not wasted time. It's a vital step in deciding what's best for you. Um, Sarah, <laughs> this, um, this came yesterday. McMullen has sent it. When you're going through your treatment and after it, there's a lot of help out there. And our information centre here can signpost you to that help. How things been in the last few weeks? Yeah, just getting used to... Lucy Hobbs was just 20 when she was diagnosed with leukaemia. She was told she would need a course of chemotherapy. I really didn't know what chemotherapy was at the time when the diagnosis came. I didn't know whether it would be in a bag, in a drip, in tablet form. Um, so I just didn't know what to expect, really. Chemotherapy quite simply means drug treatment and the exact form of that treatment will depend on the type of cancer, where it is, and other factors. Sometimes the drugs come as tablets, sometimes as an injection. Now, we know that people have fears about possible side effects. Is there any way we could stop my hair falling out? Um, you know, uh, how could I deal with the pain? What, what things can you get me to help me with the pain? And what's going to happen in the future? Are there going to be any lasting effects? I the massive one would be my fertility. Is there anything we can do to preserve any aspect of that? Or, you know, are we going to have to look at transplants? It's just, your head is full of questions. 
Well, there are no standard side effects. The side effects are very individual to the individual treatments. But what I can say to people is that we have very effective treatments for those side effects and we can make the experience as good as we possibly can using the, the various treatments that we have. That would be where your natural hairline would start. Of course, chemotherapy does cause some people to lose their hair. And that's why we can fix you an appointment with our hairdresser who can help you choose from a selection of fashionable wigs. This is radiotherapy at work. Radiotherapy is quite simply the use of high energy x-rays and other types of radiation to treat cancer. Now this can be used as your main treatment or it can be combined with other treatments like chemotherapy or surgery. After having surgery for breast cancer, Sylv Arscott underwent chemotherapy, then radiotherapy. I was thinking, scary. Um, don't know what it entails. Will it hurt? What, what will the effects be? Um, where will I have to go? Uh, you know, what, what will it do to me? Again, understandable questions. Well, this is where the radiotherapy journey begins. A lot goes into planning exactly what sort of treatment you'll receive. That's where machines like this come in. This is called a CT simulator and it helps our experts learn a lot more about your cancer, where it is, how big it is and how we treat it. And this is what happens to your CT scan. We work on these images behind the scenes to produce a tailor-made treatment plan just for you. This process can take a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but it's important that we get things right before we start. The planning process helps us accurately target the cancer and reduce side effects as much as possible. Again, a vital process that mustn't be rushed. As we've said already, every case is different. How many radiotherapy sessions you'll need, how long it will take, it all varies from patient to patient. There may be side effects, equally there may not be. I had a, an after effect of a bit of depression, which I, I gather isn't uncommon for people once they've been uh, released from all the, the treatments and all the attention. Well, here I am now, at, uh, a few years later, and fine and well, and very happy to be alive, uh, and uh, just live every day, every day to its full. <laughs> Years ago, when she was first diagnosed with leukaemia, Lucy could not have dreamt she would one day become a mother. But a treatment programme was agreed that kept all her options open. They knew how much I wanted to be a mum and how important fertility was to me. Um, so I think they just sort of suggested this route where, you know, it was just chemotherapy as opposed to a bone marrow transplant, which would have definitely meant no children. And, I don't know, the decision we made in that consultant room meant that I got this beautiful daughter. It's a few years now since Wurzel's frontman Tommy Banner had his treatment for prostate cancer. He's fighting fit now and has this message for anyone starting their treatment journey. Trust the people looking after you, especially uh, down here. We've got some, my aftercare has been absolutely magnificent. Um, and everybody, the, the team in Musgrove Park Hospital is, is second to none. This is the Vindaloo Club. What all the men here have in common is they've been through prostate cancer treatment at the Beacon Centre. They meet up socially now to share experiences and to talk about life after cancer. Follow-up support is important. Among peers like this, and from doctors and other clinical staff who are always there to talk to you if you have any questions. No one should have to feel they're alone. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to good health. Good health. Good health. Now, there's something we'll all drink to.